by the blood of our people of your land is kept safe. I see in your eyes the pain fear that will take the heart of me. So you all have to see such times. Welcome back, everyone. We are bringing you the Rings of Power Season 2, everything we know so far. That's release window, the new cast, and filming locations and all that. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump right in. I think the, the first place to start is probably going to be the release date. Uh, we're going to do another video about that, but essentially it seems like we're not going to see it until early 2024, which is earlier than we thought. We thought because they were going to miss the 2023 fall window, that it would have to go another year and go 2024 fall. And so at the time of this video, that would be over a year out. And now we're going to get it in about like nine-ish months potentially. So that's, that's exciting news um, if you are excited about season two. I know not everyone loves season one, but... <clears throat> season two they have said that uh that they are going to be being a little bit more true to some of the lore now that they've sort of set up the main uh the main antagonist and the main protagonist and they're now they're now aware of each other they can kind of get back into good old-fashioned you know lord of the rings stuff so we're looking forward to that um and we are gonna see a few changes but but a lot of people are returning um so uh, i guess the one that we are all sad about is adar leaving uh yeah. uh joseph male um he was great but he's being replaced by sam hazeldean <clears throat> so sam hazeldean um i know i know he was in the peaky blinders but i'm trying to remember so honestly, <clears throat> the look is there. He's got a very similar look. Uh, I, I now remember the character from Peaky Blinders. Not exactly the exact same character as Adar, but uh, still, I think he can do a great job with it. Um, so hopefully he can step right in. I know Molly is going to be hard to, to fill. Uh, he didn't even really get to flex his acting chops in that. His, his role was very reserved compared to that of... Um, you know, uh, the other main characters. So um, hopefully we get to see more of Adar and, and get more info on what's going on there. But we are going to get a lot of new characters coming about. Um, <clears throat> I don't know who, who these people are going to be just yet, uh, but we know that there's going to be some new elf faces um, coming on board, uh, no pun intended. Uh, Suradam the Shipwright <laughs> is one of them that is coming uh, to the show. Okay. Um, but actually a lot of these actors have been in, uh, things that have had, that they've had to act, um, in a way that I can see it fitting in with, uh, Rings of Power. Like, for example, the, uh, Callum Lynch in Dunkirk, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I can see where that might fit in to Rings of Power, especially since we we saw the creation of of mount doom essentially um and we saw the the horrors that happened there so coming from dunkirk that that works right there uh, ben daniels from the exorcist uh you know a, uh we haven't quite seen uh the shape-shifting capabilities um of sauron just yet i'm wondering if we see some of those come into play or maybe some of the uh, we know that sauron is also really gifted with um, uh, getting people to follow him. Uh, he's he's very good at at um, using words to really excite his his followers to to go with him on on crazy to, to do crazy things. Uh, so you know we might see some of that um, with some of these guys. Uh, some of these other ones, though, are interesting. So Nicholas uh, Woodison from Skyfall. And um, the one that was really interesting is Kevin Eldon from Hot Fuzz. I'm trying to think where where he might fit. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I don't know all these people, so I don't know Oliver, 
um, or uh, uh, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Um, so it's, I don't know how to <clears throat> say his name. It's here in Hines. He was a, a man's raider. Right. So that's in Game of Thrones, and he was Caesar <clears throat> in Rome. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. And so he, I mean, we know he can act. He does. Yeah, I mean, job. yeah, he's a good. He's a costume drama actor. Yeah. This is like he's built for this. He can literally play. I mean, he's older now, so uh, he does. He does have a more limited role in terms of um, what character he can play. But in terms of uh, where he goes, be it dwarf, elf, human, um, you know, it, I think wherever he goes, he's going to be able to uh pull it off so uh no i have no fear about him jumping in so that'll be great um the big question <clears throat> is the plot because we've now set things in motion um we now have sauron has made it to mount doom uh, we know galadriel now knows who he is they also know he did have a hand in making the rings so we've already started the whole he ring brought, plot he brought he brought the knowledge of alloys to uh the people <laughs> of metal earth <laughs> yep yeah he did that uh he also as um he, he also has a group of humans who believe that he is their rightful king um so how will that play into everything um and we also know that there's other stuff going on. We, we got a Balrog, but beneath the dwarves, um, we have a kind of a fractured um, Numenor, where uh, some of them seem to want to follow a different uh, path um, than what they've been doing. So, yeah, I I honestly don't quite understand what they're building to, to if i'm gonna be completely honest because they've got so many different things happening i haven't even mentioned the uh the, the harfoots um i i don't even know if they're still in it i assume they are <laughs> but like i can't why would they be you, like i just don't get it so uh there's i'm i'm just as confused as everyone else um yeah, they haven't they haven't really connected with anywhere else in the they're 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 in their own isolated story. Yeah. Well, and same as um with the stranger though. The the dwarves kind of are too. I mean, the dwarves have a little bit more Im impact because they have come to help the elves build this great forge. But in terms of being like a part of like this greater uh battle that's brewing, they really aren't even involved in that discussion yet and uh, obviously the harfoots aren't um so yeah like it's just very there's a lot of fractured things going on and on on one side and then there are characters that are um hopefully not changed for the worse although i will respect it creatively if it happens like elendil um uh he was one of my favorite characters throughout the first season but he believes his son is dead and so um yeah there's stuff there i mean he sauron can sauron must bump into him or something hallbrand yeah yeah well and and also like isildur um we we might see him get manipulated a little bit uh he, you know he's impressionable he's impressionable and is injured pre presumed dead but it's definitely injured um because we know what happens <laughs> there's no <laughs> you know there's there's no um there's no fear there that he's he's dead because they, and we have uh, can't the sister that. his sister and the what, what do you call him oh right the, the son boy, the, the boyfriend <laughs> Uh, the weirdo the weirdo boyfriend <laughs> i'm that... gonna blow up this ship to impress you <laughs> yeah yeah um i mean we really so i i actually thought that her inclusion was odd because of how little she had on the story um yeah i do hope she gets more because yeah good point did we i mean i'm just thinking back did we even need to have the ship blow up nope Nope. The only reason we had it blow up was because we wanted a way to have Isildur 
uh, sneak on the ship and like be a kind of a goofball. Like it didn't matter. Um, I guess I guess it allowed. Well, no, it didn't really. It, it didn't really allow anyone to use your power. It was just kind of a random thing. It, it wasn't required. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. And she really, she only has one scene that is that that matters, now, other than telling the guy to blow up a ship. But where she like she now understands that Numenor is in danger, to some in some capacity. Um, so that's like the only thing she's done that is potentially important going forward is that she now has this knowledge that Numenor needs needs to make some changes, otherwise they are doomed, at least according to this prophecy which may or may not her her vision of the prophecy may not may may or may not be fulfilled by hers her actions based on that which then lead to the prophecy you, you know what i'm saying like yeah. beca because she has seen it that might now lead to the doom versus if she didn't know about it and they didn't change their ways at all like because that's that's a big trope that's happening ever since game of thrones where you have these prophecies that are self-fulfilling because you attempt to change them um so that's potentially happening there but again i really don't see how numenor even plays into this anymore like they're part kind of done in my mind because they've they've come there they fought the orcs Maybe we need to sit down and rewatch the show. <laughs> Maybe we do. Maybe you know what? You know what? I like that. Here's what we'll do. Here's what we do. I, I don't know when we're gonna get to it, but for sure the fall. If we don't get to it before then, for sure the fall, because there's no new rings of power. We will rewatch. I know. I can't believe I'm saying this. We will rewatch the the rings of power season one, and now that we have had some time to reflect on where this show is going. With a with with a new set of eyes, we are going to watch this show again, and, and we uh, have low expectations. Lo lower expectations, yep. And you know the dialogue won't be as jarring at times, and uh, we know what we're getting with certain groups like the Harfoots now. So uh, there's a lot more. I can pay attention more to the clues about the future versus and just this is a tangent but speaking of low expectations <laughs> this is this is why i'm kind of excited to see indiana jones because mm. i i have no expectations of what this movie is gonna yep. be <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go see it anyway i don't care if it's good or bad <laughs> yep yep uh, crystal, I, crystal fact, skull my, does that my, to you my, my expectations are very low yeah <laughs> it's uh i think that's why i think i might actually like it me so. me too and that's <laughs> that's sort of uh, that's sort of what i hope happens with other lord of the rings projects is that i, I don't want our expect expectations to be low because things suck but what i'm saying is if we if we don't feed into the hype i i know we're gonna feed into it because we're excited but we, we need to try and not have that hype because it's not going to live up to it. It just won't. Heck, have you ever told someone how awesome Lord of the Rings is and then you show it to them and, and they don't like it that much? It's because you overhyped it. I, it. It's a great movie, but you have, to, you have to watch it not knowing how good it is the first time because then you, you really start to see it. You're like, oh my God, this is amazing. But if you tell everyone going in, this is the best film ever, and uh, every scene is is basically a masterpiece in cinema. They're gonna go in and like right off the bat say, "What the heck is going on? This is dumb," and they're not gonna like it. And then they're gonna get to the walking bits and say, "Oh, there's too much walking. Oh, why are they doing that? Like, why didn't they take the eagle?" Like, so if you just let them go with it, <laughs> I'd, I'd actually have to say that. I don't think you can overhype that trilogy, though. That's actually one of the movies where you can't okay. you can overhype it. In this fair story. enough, fair <laughs> enough. I I agree. I, I I just there. I know people. I know people who don't love the movies as much as we do, um, and I do partly blame myself for overhyping it a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not my fault. Maybe they just don't have good taste. I that could be. Um, at, but I I do worry that you know on someone's first watch I don't want I don't want to be the reason that they don't like these films and they miss right. out I would rather them not like them on their own accord 
uh, and then just say, fair enough, we have different tastes. Uh, I don't want to be the reason that they're like, like, oh, that sucked. Because I've done that before with other films um, where I, for sure I've overhyped them or for sure I've spoiled something accidentally. And then when they go to watch it, it's ruined. Uh, so that's that's my, my two cents there. But I agree. I, I honestly don't think you can overhype it. And um, that's why on my letterbox account, Lord of the Rings are my top films because those are five stars they're the only five stars i have well i have two other five stars but they're the only five star movies that are action adventure movies and um <laughs> and they take up all of my top billings on my letterbox account so uh definitely can't be overhyped enough for me anyway but yeah let us know down below what you guys think are you guys looking forward to season two of the rings of power and i guess also can you overhype the original trilogy I'd actually, I'd actually like to hear people's thoughts on that because, um, I I, I don't think you can because I mean, like, I guess if you sit, like if you like really dig into it and try to understand it and realize how they did it and like, you you're gonna you can't there's something wrong with you if you don't like it. Hey, <laughs> hey, you're preaching to the choir here. I completely <laughs> agree, and uh, so. Lord of the Rings, and this is something that I've been meaning to talk about, but the original trilogy is one of the few movies that... It's like, watch, like, if you don't like it, sit down and watch the bonus discs. And it, exactly. Like it. <laughs> so, it, the, Rings, the, the Lord of the Rings is one of the few movies where I really encourage the bonus content um, because it's... There, there, is, there is a fun aspect to that, that of the filmmaking process itself that... Uh, only heightens my love of um the films yeah, you themselves learn, you learn about the weta workshop and you're like whoa. Yep. <laughs> and you realize the budget and like whoa whoa <laughs> and how innovative everything is and how oh yeah, yeah. oh exactly and, and you you get some really fun it's behind the scenes it. stuff with the, the actors like it's it, like even if you don't like the story, you're gonna have an appreciation for the ground if this these films broke. Oh, for sure. I I think like there are there are a group of people who watch who who like Lord of the Rings the films, but not because they like the films necessarily. They like how they were made. How Peter Jackson was able to hodgepodge this thing together with a bunch of weird people telling him to do stuff from the studios to needing to basically invent yeah. the technology to make the and battles the, and work. And the little trivia stuff, like that one orc captain is modeled after Harvey Weinstein. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly. amazing. <laughs> so you get that kind of stuff in there. You get like those kind of sentimental parts about how like on the last day of shooting, um, Orlando Bloom broke his bow right after he had finished filming. And like yeah. that, that's like they're like oh we don't need to make it again because we're done and there's like this kind of moment like oh we're done um you get that story um you get i mean this is one i was telling someone just the other day about uh about vigo uh purchasing uh his his horse, horse. as well as yeah. his, his stunt horse for his stunt double because uh he just kind of fell in love with that that animal and, and wanted it uh, to to be with him so there's like those kind of moments that uh are just really touching about the whole experience and then obviously everyone seems to almost be their character at times mm -hmm. like if you watch the behind the scenes and you learn that um sean bean is scared of helicopters so he would climb the mountain <laughs> every day <laughs> That is such a Boromir move <laughs> to be like, I don't trust your flying machines. I'll do it myself. <laughs> Everyone else took the eagles. I Everyone takes walk. the eagles. Boromir's like, no, we're walking. We're climbing this mountain. That was why they didn't fly the eagles to Morgor. Mordor, because <laughs> Boromir said no. <laughs> Boromir said no, yeah. Uh, but even like uh, the actors are playing Merry and Pippin, like they – they are those characters. They embody them so much on set. They're making, they're constantly doing like doing jokes, pulling pranks, um, you know, just running around being kind of a bit of a terror, but also kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's just so good. Like, it, like the camaraderie there that that they all had. Um, heck, heck, learning, uh, learning that Gimli was high the whole time on beard glue, so they thought that they were Gimli, <laughs> and they were just like. 
hitting extras with their battle axe because they didn't realize it was a movie. <laughs> Just kind of fun stories like that. So yeah, I agree. I think the behind the, this is some of the best behind the scenes work, and I I do wish more movies did it. Like I I would have loved to see the behind the scenes of even like Harry Potter or something like that. Um, I know there's some, but not to the extent that you get from. From Lord and of the we Rings. get we get to look forward to seeing the Gimli actor in Indiana Jones when it comes out. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Gonna gonna make <laughs> his uh, reappearance in that. Um, and I wish he would come back in Bond. Is he dead in Bond? I forget. I I think he's shot. I don't know if he's dead. Hmm. But I wish he'd come back in Bond too. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think that's it for this one. Let us know down below the overhyped or not. That is the question. Maybe I'll put a poll up. I think you can put a poll up on YouTube. Put a poll up. Is the original trilogy, can you overhype the original trilogy to someone who's not seen it? Yes or no? And we'll see you guys next time. I regret to announce this is the end. I bid you all a very fond farewell. <laughs>